Hi there. What's on my mind this week is managing serial numbering patterns on Koha. I've recently been doing a few training sessions on serials and um, of course many of you still have print runs for journals that you want to check in in on Koha and I thought it might be useful just to run through um, some of the uh, different ways that you can modify serial subscription numbering patterns to reflect the types of journal that you need to receive on Koha. So hopefully many of you will be familiar with the more straightforward numbering pattern, such as the monthly volume number pattern that comes delivered with Koha. Um, we can use that as an initial example to have a look at. So here on my serials uh, module, I've got a, a subscription already for that um, well-known title Koha Monthly. If I just click into it to have a look at the serial subscription detail, um, we can go into the edit uh, area for that subscription. And when I edit the subscription, I'll just run through into the testing phase. I'll run over the uh, subscription details area and let's have a look at the way that this subscription has been created. It's a frequency of one month, so it's a one monthly journal. And for this particular subscription, I've given it a 24 issue subscription length so in effect with a one month that's two years worth it's starting at the first of the year and um, it, I've used the numbering pattern volume number and this is the vo numbering pattern that comes delivered with Koha um, my starting volume number is number one and I'm currently at issue number two in the uh, sequence. Let's just test the prediction pattern and have a look at how that is panning out over my two years. So I've started with volume number one, number two in February, and I'm rolling through to the December issue where it changes from volume one, number 12 to volume two, number one. So that's great. Um, it's changing at the end of the year. It's incrementing my volume number after 12 issues and starting again with volume one number one. And I can see how that's actually created. If I just click done there on the um, test there, I can see how that's actually created by using the show advanced pattern button here. When I click on show advanced pattern, I can see the pattern name and the formulating number, formula, the numbering formula, which is uh, uses the X and Y coordinates to define how that volume number sequence is going to be created. So we can see here in the number, which is the indicated by the number Y, the letter Y here, the numbering sequence at 12 a year is beginning with issue number two and it's adding one to each issue number after every one following the sequence here, the label every. So after every one, it adds one. And when more than 12, it's going to set back to one. So in effect, that's how it's resetting at the end of the 12 issues to start with issue number one again. The volume uh, sequence adds one every 12, so every 12 issues, and when more than 9999, which in effect to Koha means uh, when never, set back to 1. So in effect, that's incrementing my volume number after every 12 issues, which is great. That's fine. Um, and that's why we get the uh, volume number incrementing after every uh, 12 issues. Um, the inner counter here just indicates any issues that are who have already been received on Koha um, or potentially if you're beginning a new uh, serial pattern, you might be indicating any issues that have been received outside of Koha. So that gives my checks and balances to tell the system when to reset the numbers. So that's fine for a monthly journal. I'm just going to save that subscription. But of course, not all journals fit into that um, tidy pattern. Uh, many you have to use, um, you, many don't fit into any pattern at all, but others we can adapt uh, the numbering patterns to reflect some of the more interesting uh, recurrences of how journals appear, um, how journals are published. 
So let's try, for example, and have a look at the British Medical Journal. So if I flip to that tab here, we can see an example record for the BMJ. Now, if I create a new subscription record for this journal, um, I'm not going to link it to a, um, a vendor um, at this instance, uh, but I'm going to um, just create my subscription record. It's going to be at my Centerville library. I've added in my call number. I'm not going to enter in any notes and so on. Um, I'm not using a adding a vendor to this, so I'm not going to bother with adding in a grace period. Let's say we're going to display a few issues to staff and a few issues to the public. So the key bit is the next screen where I'm going to not claim my late issues. So I'm going to click on OK there, where I'm going to add a new subscription. So here I can cho obviously choose my first issue publication date. So I might be receiving it at the beginning of the year. And it is a monthly journal. So I'm going to say that it's a monthly frequency, which is fine. Um, let's say I'm having this journal for two, for two years worth. And so I'm going to put in 20, um, 24 months in my subscription length. My subscription is a yearly subscription, so it's going to start at the beginning of the year. Now, here for my numbering pattern, if I choose the delivered pattern for volume number, which is a standard monthly journal, let's say my volume number is beginning at 200 and the issue number is um, number one. Now, when I test my pattern here, it behaves just like a normal uh, 12 issues per year journal. So I'm starting in January and in December, issue number 12, it reverts, it changes to issue number one and increments the volume number. Well, that's not what I want with the BMJ here. It, the running, what I have is a running number for that journal. So I need to change my pattern to reflect that. So I can do that whilst I'm actually adding my new subscription. Um, and I can do that by clicking on show advanced pattern here, as we demonstrated before with the volume number one. And this allows me, it gives me the same grid that we looked at for the volume number, but it allows me to modify the pattern. So I can click through here into modify pattern. And the first thing I have to do is give it, give it a pattern name. And many libraries where you've got a lot of different numbering patterns to manage, you can choose the way that you handle this pattern name. You might give it uh, an indication of what the pattern does. So you might call it um, running number, running issue number, for example, uh, but you could just call it the name of the journal that you're handling. So I could call it BMJ pattern. And that's what I'm going to do in this instance. Um, then we've got our numbering volume, uh, number, numbering formula, which may well be volume and number. So that may be the right numbering formula that we're going to use. But now in the advanced prediction pattern grid, it gives us the opportunity to make changes to reflect how that journal might behave. So here in the Y column, as before with the regular monthly, we can see that it adds one to every one issue and when more than 12 it sets back to one well if it doesn't reset back to one and the issue number keeps running on then we need to amend this when more than value so i can go in here and i can change this to when more than 9999 for example nine for example in effect to koha never and i can uh, test my prediction pattern accordingly so if i test the prediction pattern I can see here that my volume begins at 200, as I expected, with issue number one. But after my 12 issues for the year, it doesn't reset back to one. It's going to continue on with that incremental number accordingly. And that's managed simply by changing the when more than value to change how that might reflect. So in the volume, I'm saying change after every 12 issues. So every 12 issues, I'm going to reset. Um, uh, I'm going to add another one to that 
volume number. Well, again, some journals don't behave like that, not the BMJ in particular, but other examples that you may have in your in your library. So say, for example, the volume number changes after every six issues, then I can amend my volume column accordingly. So I can say add one every six instead and set back off to one in effect, never by that long number string. So let's test the prediction pattern here and see how that reflects. And here we can see after six volume issues, it resets the volume number to 201 in this instance, and the issue number continues running on. So we're reflecting that by modifying the pattern here. Uh, so what I can do here is if I'm happy with the way that that pattern is now behaving, I can save it as a new pattern. So if I click on save as new pattern, it's going to save it as BMJ pattern name. And I'm also going to save the subscription there. Now, once you've saved a new subscription pattern, you have that recorded in this admin area on the left hand side where it says manage numbering patterns. So if I go in here, to have a look at those numbering patterns that might be created. I can see my BMG pattern and it's sitting in the list here. I can go into it at this instance and edit it if I want to, if I've made a mistake. So perhaps, for example, it doesn't change after every six. I can make the modification here and change it, the volume number after every 12. And I can make my amendment there and save it. The other thing that I can do is I can change the display order of my patterns. And the display order reflects how they appear in the pull down list when you're adding uh, a new uh, subscription record. So the list that appears uh, when I'm uh, creating a new subscription. So if my BMJ pattern is relatively rare, I might want to set it quite low down in the list. So when I click on it and click on, I might say display order, say, um, let's put it in as eight, for example. Now, when I save it, if I come back into um, modifying a subscription, so let's look for my VMJ. Um, uh, my medical journal, let's just, um, I must have called it, uh, yeah, that's right, I didn't call it the BMJ, did I? Where are we? British Medical Journal, here we are. So if I go into my um, journal now, and uh, as if to edit the subscription, let's see where the numbering pattern now displays. I'm not going to claim, so I can click on OK there. Now, in the numbering pattern, I've chosen the BMJ, but if I click on that pull down there, it's displaying in the order that I requested. So dependent on what display order you put, you can manage the numbering pattern list here. So if you've got a lot of journals and you're creating a lot of numbering patterns to reflect different elements of how those journals are actually published, you might end up with quite a long list here. So you can do the you can use that display order in the uh, numbering patterns area here to control where they're going to list in the um, it, when you're selecting them. So it's just a quick run through of how you potentially might uh, manage patterns. And as you can see from the numbering pattern area, the manage numbering pattern area, you've also got the ability, if I go into one of these, to test how those um, patterns display outside of being in the middle of adding a new actual subscription record. So if I go into my numbering patterns administration area here, I could say, for example, click on the actions menu against my volume number. I can see the way that the um, algorithm is going to create my volume number sequence. But I have this really useful test prediction pattern at the bottom of the screen here. And at this play, this in this area, I can test the pattern without actually making any amendments to my subscription. So if I want to see how this particular pattern behaves for a monthly journal with a particular first issue publication date, I can select that from the list. I can start with my begins with value. So it might be volume 21 issue number two, and I can test the pattern from within this area here. So I can see it pans out where my 
different issues are going to fall. And by testing it here, I can see whether there are any amendments that I need to make to this pattern or do I actually need to create a new pattern from scratch by going into the numbering patterns area and choosing um, new numbering pattern here and sort of beginning from scratch with a blank form? So hopefully that's given you a bit of a, a refresher as to how uh, you can modify existing numbering patterns. Once you've created and modified a numbering pattern, you can control how they're ordered when you're adding new subscription records. Thanks very much for listening. Bye.